Hello, my name is Jimmy Newland. I am a physics and astronomy teacher at Bel Air High School in Houston, Texas, and I'm also a PhD student at the University of Houston College of Education. I'm going to present my preliminary work on how authentic research experiences for teachers might act as a form of professional development in computer science, and more generally, computational thinking pedagogy. This project is an outgrowth of my own time as a teacher research intern at the Scalable Health Labs in the Department of Electrical and Computer Engineering at Rice University. What do I mean by authentic research experience? The National Science Foundation has an ongoing grant program to fund university labs that embed teachers in research in science, math, engineering, and computer science programs. These programs are known by the umbrella term Research Experience for Teachers, or RETs. There are many other programs from universities that embed teachers into the research experience more than just the RETs. Teacher research internships can involve the use of unique lab equipment and techniques where the teacher takes on an almost lab technician sort of role, but other research programs involve computing in the form of computer programming, electrical engineering, and other technology applications. In many of these research programs for teachers, participants create a poster or a presentation at the end of the program, but they also usually create a curriculum item that is influenced by their own personal research experience. The research internships I am exploring involve more than just the acquisition of computer programming skills. I adopted the computational thinking framework described by Weintraub et al. Of the four practices described, only computational problem solving practices align closely with the traditional computer programming model. The other practices are part of science pedagogy in general, but also computer science pedagogy specifically. The increasingly important role of data practices cuts across all of the STEM curricula, not to mention social science curricula as well. Many science curricula embrace modeling and simulation practices as well, where students create the models and simulations, as well as using pre-existing models and simulations to understand concepts. And finally, systems thinking practices involves thinking in levels, understanding system complexity, and relating one part of a system to another. I thought I'd use my research internship experiences to explore computational thinking in more depth. In 2018, I was a part of a pilot cohort of teachers in the Paths Up and Expeditions in Computing RET at Rice University. We explored the hardware and software aspect of something very difficult to say, photoplethysmography, which I'm proud I figured out how to finally pronounce. We usually call it a PPG for short. This means that you use light to measure the flow of blood. Each of us developed a project involving pulse oximeter devices or something similar. My 2018 project involved attempting to create an inexpensive open source alternative to commercial pulse oximeters. I learned how to read data directly from hardware using Python, and I learned how to use Python to reduce the data for analysis and for visualization. In 2019, I returned to the Rice Scalable Health Labs for a different PPG project using a computer webcam to read the PPG signal remotely in real time. My project involved creation of a graphical user interface. This allowed direct real-time comparison of the contact PPG signal from the device from my 2018 experience and the webcam PPG signal. I took a week off from this program in 2019 to head to McDonald Observatory for a very different sort of research program involving stellar spectroscopy. This one was not an RET specifically. It was something that was funded by the University of Texas at Austin. While I was on the mountain, I spoke to astronomers about how much computation their work required. One of these conversations inspired me to combine my two research experiences into a single lesson. One big difference between the RETs in 2018 and 2019 was in the use of computer science pedagogy. In 2018, we were exploring in a very open-ended way, while in 2019, our research advisor decided to bring in more focus to our learning. The use of worked examples at the beginning of the summer during the second year meant we as learners were able to develop our own projects more quickly than the previous year. 
Some research exists using cognitive load theory as a framework to explain the possible effectiveness of worked examples in cases like ours. Our mentor would give us some examples and some starter code and then ask us to expand the project in some way. Before long, we had the hang of reading live data from the webcam to get a pulse signal. The RET program went from an open inquiry model in 2018 to a guided inquiry model in 2019. There are a few examples of what we saw when, we, when I say these worked examples, what do I mean? They're displayed here for you to peruse. I wanted to share the lessons that were the result of my personal research experiences. There are three of them here. Two of them are from RET experiences and are published at teachengineering.org. The first had students creating their own pulse sensor system to capture, analyze, and visualize their own heartbeat. There are also some variations on this one using different microcontrollers. The published lesson uses the Circuit Playground Express or CPX board, while I also created a shorter version using Arduino Uno boards. There's another version using MicroPython in the CPX board, and yet another one using Microsoft MakeCode and the MicroBit board. The next lesson has astronomy students analyzing a series of images of a star cluster to determine the brightness of a variable star, which can then be used to find the distance to that cluster. Plus, they have to learn how to do all of this using Python code. I decided to use Jupyter Notebook for this project. The target star varies quickly enough that in the animation you can see here, in a just a single night, you can see it blinking from very dim to much more bright. The last project is a work in progress where students determine the chemical abundances of a star using spectral data and code. All of these lessons and all of the code can be found at jimmynewland.com. I want to encourage teachers to seek out these research experiences. I found several that involve computer science and more than one that uses computer science in conjunction with fields like health science, physics, astronomy, or engineering. I want to mention one particular program that is unique. Rice created a program this summer called the Switch Program, where participants stay at home, but they still participate in, honest to God, computer science research. I need to thank the National Science Foundation and Dr. Saberwal and Dr. Nicole at Rice University, who actually funded my experience here. And I need to thank Dr. Sneeden and Dr. Finkelstein and McDonald Observatory for giving me an opportunity to head out there and collect data. I want you to go to jimmynewland.com and check out all of these projects. There's a lot more information there and videos and code and references and things like that. Thank you very much.